Woody is two for three, a couple of base knocks. It's getting late in the day, and it's getting late in the game for TCU. Six outs. What a job their athletic department has done. I mean, their their football program has really taken off in recent years. Now the baseball program bidding to join that as far as uh, had just having great success. And you love to see programs build that way. Hey. Got some really nice kids. And very talented kids as well. Down to third off of the third baseman Johnson. That ball was scorched. Johnson didn't have a chance. Kyle, how about this TCU program? Yeah, it's pretty impressive, Mike. I mean, you look at the job that Jim Schlossnickel's done since he got here. He took the job seven years ago. When he got there, TCU had not made a regional appearance since 1994. Since he's been there, they haven't missed it. Seven straight years they've been in the postseason. And he came from UNLV, left after he won 47 games in 2003. He said he took the job because they just wanted to be good. Eric Hyman was the AD at the time. He's now at South Carolina. This one will go to the screen and Woody goes to second. They built a brand new stadium. Lupton Stadium was built in 2002. His wife Cammy's family was from Dallas so it was natural to take his family back there and UNLV was very good about it. He still had time left on his contract. They said we understand you're going back close to your family. We know it's a great opportunity but guys he literally has built this program. If this is it and TCU goes home today. Still quite an accomplishment for him. First time they've been here to Omaha. And remember, they still get the left-hander Matt Perk back next year. So if they don't go on and win this thing, right, get a pretty good chance to come back again next year. He said he just wanted his kids to have the chance to come here before Rosenblatt closed, and he got him here. And of course, that was not his ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to win the yeah. whole thing. But he at least accomplished that part of it so far. Featherston at the plate had a huge hit the other night when he tripled hey. with the bases loaded. Now he's facing Parker in that 94 mile an hour fastball. One and one. He is 0 for 3 tonight. He'll be back next year, a sophomore from Houston. That one's in the dirt. You know people are starting to care about your program when you're Jim Schlossnagel and you're getting emails about what the team's doing how they're going good or bad you're getting emails and now people care and they're reaching out and they've reached a school record of 52 wins and you know how he did it really get over the top he actually had to relax a few rules because he was so rule oriented and discipline oriented shot back up the middle loved by Cardula but he can't make a play Featherston. Hustled down the line to beat it out. First and third, nobody out. Another big hit for Featherston. The bottom of the order doing its job, trying to make something happen here in the eighth. Hit the ball hard, get an error, hit the ball soft, but hit it in the right place, get the big hop. And hit the firm part of the infield with all this rain. He got two good hops to get that infield single. It's a heck of an effort by Cardulo. His momentum is taking him away from the play, and the throw he made still almost got him. Yep. Now Mike Martin will make that slow walk to talk to Parker, tell him what he wants. Well, I'll tell, what, tell you what he wants. Disregard the runner on third. We'll take a three-run lead coming out of this yeah. inning. We have no outs. Let's just go for the double play ball. Forget about the runner on third. Get me the hitter out. And if we get a double play, that's extra special. With the mistakes that Florida State has made in this ball game so far, I think it's really important for everybody on that field to remind themselves they got to throw to the right base. They have to hit the cutoff man and they have to do the right things down here in the stretch. The NCAA.com, your official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. They will keep you up to date on everything 
about the College World Series here in Omaha, Nebraska. TCU fans fired up. Aaron Schultz, the center fielder, stands in. Even though he's the little guy, has home run hey. power and the wind not nearly the factor it was earlier. Still blowing to right, but only about five miles an hour. Had a good at bat. His last at bat lined out to center field, but was all over the pitch. He's seeing the ball well. Featherston at first, Woody at third. Breaking pitch. In the air to straightaway center. Holt had a little trouble finding it, makes the catch. They're going to have to hold the runner at third. There's no sense to send them on a close play. And that's the first out of the inning. Runners have to hold at first and third. I think the pressure is more on Florida State right now. They have seen over the years so many bizarre things happen to them in their bid to stay alive in the College World Series. Sometimes in the back of your mind it's uh oh what can happen next and they do not want to be in that mindset. Especially when you've already made five errors. Rivera. Takes that one low. Five errors that is amazing. And they've got a four run lead. The defense is representing a colander right now. One ball, no strikes to Brantz Rivera, the 6 3 sophomore. Breaking hey. pitch in there for a called strike. Parker's got some weapons. He's got a big arm, and he's a max effort guy, and it's really all about command. And the way you see the movement on his ball and his breaking ball, he really doesn't need to aim for the corners, aim more the middle of the plate and let it work to the edges. Chase the breaking pitch one and two. They were down four runs against Oral Roberts in March. They came back to win at 6 4. That was their biggest deficit. They are down by four right now. 52 and 13. You are not used to losing. No. That was a curveball that stayed in the strike zone. Pretty hittable pitch. And Rivera would like another hack at that one. Well, he stayed down and threw that ball so well that when he fouled it off, he didn't know where the ball was. He didn't know if he hit it fair or foul. He was concentrating so much, staying on it. First and third with one out. One and two, Rivera. In the dirt, two and two. Now Parker has thrown his fastball mainly away and has been pulling at the breaking ball so far as the pitch that's gotten him the outs and they're going to talk it over. They've thrown like four breaking balls in a row right here. He has something going on with his arm his motion with his elbow like something's happening. Boy that's the last thing they'd like to see. I think it's a is the pitching elbow. I saw an emotion from the home plate umpire, like he's got some tenderness there. Yeah. If he is hurt, whoever would come in in his place would have as long as he wants to warm up. But this would be. I think it's going to be the left fielder. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be McGee, Mr. McGee. But it's a big blow because Parker has been a really good guy out of the bullpen, really good setup man, and you just hate to see it for him that uh, something happened to that throwing arm. Oh no! It looks like there. swelling in his uh, arm already. Like that. Yeah, and all pitchers can relate to that. You just don't want to see this and 
I mean, this strikes home for me. My son went through Tommy John surgery. He's now just had his labor repaired in his shoulder. So anytime you see somebody walk up the mound, that is not a good sign. Big hand for Parker. Well, we wish him the best. Hope that is uh, not as serious as it looks. Now you're going to get Mike McGee to come in at a left field. And Sean Gill Martin will take his place in left. Mike McGee has 13 saves this year. This is the sixth time this year that he has hit a home run in a game and then come in to pitch. And I'll tell you what, he's already done it here at the College World Series to get him to this game. Gil Martin left getting a little warm up action. He gets all he wants, right? He gets all he wants. Thank you. Mike McGee will get all the warm up pitches he wants because he came in because of an injury. And you know, we talked about on Monday how he got a home run against Florida and also came in and beat the arch rivals by getting the save at the end of the game. He was absolutely outstanding. They've gone to him in all the situations this year to hit number three, play left field. Against Florida, the home run. Just got into the left field seats and then comes into the ball game and saves it. It has not been an unfamiliar spot for him. 13 saves this year to go with a 4 0 record. And a very stingy 1.33 ERA. He is not an overpowering guy, but he's been very effective. There's the home run against a 20 mile an hour win. And now he is in looking for his 14th and biggest save of the year. The 41st round draft choice of the Diamondbacks, first team all conference, finalist for the two way player of the year award. And that draft position tells you that uh, they do not project him as a closer. He was third team all American as a right handed pitcher, not as a left fielder. But you think two way guys like Buster Posey, of course, in 2008 with FSU. Timmy Hudson. He inherits a 2 2 count against Rivera. The situation first and third. Breaking pitch. Ripped. Foul. Boy, Rivera was primed and ready to go. Well, he had to be with those two strikes, and he got a breaking ball, but it was left on the plate. McGee comes in and says, All right, we're up by four. I'm coming right after you. He will pitch with that slider like it's a fastball. Rivera, pretty good average hitter for somebody in the nine hole. Towards short. Out force at second on the first, not in time, run scores. It was close, but Rivera kept the inning alive, hustling down the line. Witty scored from third to make it seven to four. It's a good two hopper with some top spin. They do a good job, but the speedy Rivera beats it out. It's just good for FSU to get one the way the infield defense has been going tonight. You got to make sure That's one right there. <laughs> That's right. Any ball hit tonight Five scares errors, you a little just bit. Make sure you get an out. Rivera first now for Pena. Ball. And Pena jacked one the last time up. If he could do it again, he'd cut it to a one run game. Batting left handed this time, and the wind is to his advantage. And he's got more power from this side of the plate, which he showed you the last time.
he hits one here, they'll all have Mohawks. <laughs> Immediately. If they move on. <laughs> the rally caps are on. The lead has been cut to three. Missed badly. They didn't want any part of Pena. Guess who's up? Brian Holliday, the heart and soul of this ball club. The guy who has been so good his entire career. And he's never come up in a bigger situation than he's got right now. Brian at the plate and Mike on the mound. Both these teams have relied on these two individuals yeah. to get here. To carry them emotionally a left fielder and a closer and a starting catcher senior that hustles and leads your team. The only thing we're missing is the ninth inning it's the eighth. One superstar against another. Hey. Breaking pitch for a called strike. Could be his last collegiate at bat but right now he's bearing down one pitch at a time. And the wind has calmed down. The flags are blown straight down. So left field is open. Could be the last time McGee pitches. Yeah. A lot of could be's at work. Time run at the plate line drive left field line. That gets down for a double. That'll get one run home. Holiday trying to get the second, and he just got in there. Holy cow! Strong throw from left. Gil Martin got it in and Holiday barely beat him for a double. Well, he does it all down there. He came out and he gave his left hand on the slide at second and then tagged the bag with his right after he pulled it back. He rakes this ball. If he gets under it a little more, it is the three run homer we were looking for. The ball comes into the car and goes over to second. He gets, he's out timing wise, but he gives his left hand and throws the right. We look at the hustle. If he does not bust out of the box, he will be out at second for sure. Watch this slide. Left hand, oh, no, pull it back and go with the right. It's a great deep. It was fantastic. What a ball game this has turned into. Seven to five. The time runs aboard. And Holiday, the superstar, has come through. Coach can tie the game with a base hit. Holiday is not fast by any means, but you saw how smart that slide was. I saw that kind of slide for the first time about a month ago on a Major League Baseball telecast. I thought it was one of the coolest things I ever <laughs> saw because now when an infielder puts that glove down there, you can actually beat him with that slide. You're going to make him tag you instead of just lay the glove in front of the bat. Four of the five runs in this game unearned because of FSU mistakes. They will be very fortunate to escape here with all the errors they have committed tonight. Two balls and two strikes to Jason Coates. Big errors. A lot of the fans here have adopted TCU as their team. McGee wanted him to chase, couldn't do it. Three and two with the time runs aboard. Don't be surprised if you get a breaking ball here with first base open and the time run on second base. You're not just going to give in if you're Mike McGee with a fastball. Matt Curry, the left-handed power hitter, is on deck. I think the adoption is final. We got a standing O right now. Oh boy. Breaking pitches while they're loaded. They're on their feet, Mike. Yes, they are. Matt Curry with the most power in this lineup. 17 home runs. 
60 driven in. The wind is just a zephyr now to right. But he doesn't need wind to get it out there. Curry can launch all by himself against the closer, Mike McGee. Fastball misses. There's no place to put it. Well, we said a couple innings ago, TCU was flat, and not flat anymore. A ball and a strike to Curry. Pena is at third. Holiday, who had that big double at second. Coates, who just walked at first. Remember, Holiday doesn't have great speed, so on a single, if the ball's hit sharply, we could have a play at the plate. Some pretty good arms for Florida State. Swing and a miss, strike two. This is why we love coming to Omaha. We see a big comeback somewhere along the road every single year. Is this it? Is this the inning that keeps TCU alive? In the dirt, nice block by Lopez. Great technique, got his shoulders forward and made sure that ball didn't go anywhere. Sort of smothered it right in front of the plate. A pitcher's best friend is a catcher that knows how to block balls in the dirt. Especially with a man on third. Two and two, bases loaded, two out, bottom of the eighth. FSU and TCU alike on their feet. Curry at the plate, McGee on the mound. And that baby was out of here by a mile. Mm -hmm. And McGee, who has been so successful saving games and winning games, can't measure up here. TCU at one point was down seven to two. Now they're up nine. Seven. And you know how they feel in the FSU dugout. That's Coach Schlossnagel's family. That may be the happiest moment of their collective lives right now. Home run number 18 for Matt Curry. It is their largest come from behind victory. They've had 14. The biggest one was four. What a time to have it. Josh Elander will hit for Von Tungla. Matt Curry picked on a 3 2 little hanging slider. He was in between on the fastball. Mike McGee couldn't get the fastball in there on the 2 2 pitch. He left it high and away. Earlier in the bat, 
Curry had swung through a fastball. He went with his number one pitch, his out pitch, the slider. But it was just a basic strike, and Curry, he planted it. This one by Elander is smoked in the left center field, cut off by Tyler Holt. And the freshman from Round Rock, Texas, has a base hit. Nine men have come to the plate in this, the bottom of the eighth. And they're thinking, we are staying in Omaha. But Florida State still has a chance to hit in the eighth and ninth. We're not done. But it is going to take an awful lot. For the Seminoles to get themselves up off the floor after this. That's going to be a psychological test. Well, they've got six outs. And they still got to get some outs here. Eight of nine runs unearned. And they would have only themselves to blame if they eventually lose this game with the five errors. Witty. You think about Jim Schlossnagel's son Jackson. He was playing catch in front of the dugout with yeah. his dad. Now he's got his mom, Cammy, right there, going crazy with that grand slam. What a memory for that kid. Yeah, you man. think you'll remember this? Oh my gosh. He'll be a baseball fan forever. He's lucky enough to live to about 85 or 90, and he's got his great grandchildren gathered around. He says, you know, I remember a day back at Omaha at the old stadium. No! <laughs> <laughs> when I was going absolutely nuts because this happened. Scantling will come on in relief of McGee. Who was shelled? And here's the way the brackets look UCLA, the only undefeated team in this bracket. TCU and Florida State each at one and one. Florida's gone. And in the other bracket, Clemson is the undefeated team. Oklahoma and South Carolina still have to play on Thursday night. And remember, 18 of the 20 years that they've had this format, the 2 0 team has won 18 of 20. Hunter Scantling, big kid, 6'8, 270, out of Jacksonville, Florida. 3 2 with a 4.30 ERA. Well, Mike McGee stays in left, so they will lose their DH. Mike is a very, very good hitter, but they'll have some pinch hitters probably. And sure. To come around. And what a big disappointment it's got to be for him. But you can't and take him out of the game. He's your three hole hitter. Absolutely. And, and all he's thinking runs. is give me another chance to get up there and yeah. do some damage with a bat. And this goes back, remember. Brian Holiday slide at second base. This inning could have been Absolutely. over with him trying to stretch that hit into a double. But he gives the left hand and takes it away and gets in there with the right. You, know, you get out here and you start falling in love with these kids, and I feel bad for McGee. Absolutely. And th there's no lonelier place than to be a yeah, pitcher and have pitch. to go play left field compared to being able to go on the bench and, yeah. and get in the dugout where nobody can be around you. Scantling misses outside. The great thing was the fans when he came out there were giving him a standing ovation, kind of in support. They were pounded on the wall out there. And they were actually just trying to support the young man. Ball. That one's inside. Scantling looks like the mound's too small for him. I mean, he's that big. That's a good guy. 
fastball hit to deep left by Woody, and that thing's out of here by a mile. The carnage continues. Witty had only hit three home runs all year long. He looked like Babe Ruth on that one. High fastball comes in. He makes a good swing on it. And boy, he just got a lot of aluminum on this one. That bat's hot. It's white hot if you're TCU. <laughs> Candy can't believe it. Candy, Candy excuse me. That's all right. Holy cow. 11 to 7. At one point, they were down 7 to 2. Yeah. Witty started the inning, reached on an error. This is the 11th man to bat in the inning. Hey. Featherston has already singled. Boy, and the Seminoles just want to get out of this and grab a bat. Fly ball to the left, late start by McGee, but the shortstop Cardulo is out to take it. What an inning for TCU. There is the big shot of the inning. Matt Curry just annihilates one to center field. A grand slam home run. And TCU has come from far, far behind. They have the lead in the eighth. Well, what a day for sports. This is a remarkable game here. Eight runs in the eighth, four coming on Curry's Grand Slam to get TCU on top 11 to 7. We had the World Cup. We had Wimbledon. We sorry still have we Wimbledon out, tomorrow. <laughs> sorry we ran out of major events for you. Caleb Merck will come on for TCU. And Stuart Tapley will be the pinch hitter for Florida State. Tapley a 273 hitter on the year. Takes a strike call. Uh -huh. He has been slumping lately, had been the DH most of the year, but really struggled down the stretch. Struck out a lot. Ball. That one just missed. If you're a Florida State player, how do you pick yourself up off the deck after that? It's from the cliche one pitch at a time. You look at the body of the work today and you start probably thinking we deserve to lose with the five errors yeah. with the lack of strikes at times pitching around left handed hitters continuously because of avoiding the right field wind. But really the five errors are the key you just can't give people four outs. You can't give them four outs that many times. No. 3-2 to Tapley. Fastball down the right field line. And tracked down by Rivera in right. One out in the Florida State eighth. Well, we told you the uh, TCU team had been adopted by the neutral fans here in Omaha. They are uh, celebrated as they travel around the city. Boy, they have increased their reputation by yet another notch on the ladder. Well, they talked about how beating Texas in Austin, the distraction and the hard part was inside the stadium, not out. Well, and the distraction here 
And Omaha is out, not in. Well, it just got bigger outside this ballpark. Devin Travis gets a base hit. Florida State needs base runners. Travis gets a single through the right side. And you think about Mike Martin when he uh, made the field out here, people were thinking, wouldn't this be great? To, you know, I mean, not that you're rooting for anybody in particular. But it would be wonderful for college baseball if Mike Martin wins the last College World Series at Rosenblatt. And they're not done yet. They're not. But you look across the field then at Jim Schlossnagel who said, if I didn't, couldn't get a team here before this stadium was gone, I would have yeah. been physically ill. Right. And he is so glad to be here too. So there are so many stories about why people want to come here and then why they want to win. Hey. It's hard to figure out who to pull for. And, and I'm not intimating that it wouldn't be great if TCU didn't win or if Clemson no, didn't win or just relaying what you know and what it you is. have seen and you it's know what's in the hearts and minds of these players yeah. and coaches. It is just such a great event. This one's popped up but it's going to reach the stands. But these are the darlings. TCU are the darlings of this yeah. city right now. I have never seen I've been coming here five years. You've been coming here a lot longer. I have never seen in concert the stands rise and give a standing ovation in the midst of one team or the other's pep rally. Yeah. I mean, you looked out left or right, and everybody was standing. It's a great point. And it wasn't just purple that was standing. That's right. <laughs> Lopez just got a piece. One ball, two strikes to Rafael, who was 0 for 3, struck out twice, and lined out. And the Seminoles, boy, hats off to them. They're not going to go quietly. Lopez with a big base hit, hit it hard. And they're one base hit away from having the tying run come to the plate. How big and is now the Josh Elander the home run right now? Oh, huge. They were only down by two. And now that ground ball gets through right here and things start to spiral the other way. And they're back to the top of the order and Tyler Holt to be followed by Johnson and McGee and you can bet that McGee is just saying give me a chance get the bases loaded and get me up there. What a ball game. <laughs> it's just a yeah it's not like fifty nine fifty nine apiece and Wimbledon in the fifth set yet. Let's just hold off here. <laughs> it could be 59 59 in the 35th inning. Yep. Tyler Holt out of Gainesville, Florida, the home of the Gators. He was someone who was not particularly aligned to his hometown team. Had gone to one of the camps for Florida State as a youngster. Wanted to go there, ball in the dirt, blocked by Holiday. Nobody advances. Funny story that Mike Martin talked about them is when they play Florida. <laughs> nobody wanted to come off the bus with him. Nobody wanted to go on no. the field with him. Viewed there, as a traitor there was when they a lot went of back. Venom there back with Gatorville. Absolutely. A ball and no strikes to Holt. Sherman Johnson with home run power is on deck. Yeah. Two and oh to Holt. There's Sherman. And this is Caleb Burke, the sophomore from Keller, Texas. Three saves, a two and one record. Yeah. And how about this for an earned runner average 1.01. 1 He's got backup working. Marshall. Just in case. 
but Merck who can get that fastball up around 94 when he pushes it is trying to be the hero here. Fastball high and they are loaded. Sherman Johnson has been on base every time tonight. He has walked, singled, singled, and homered. Yikes. Game on. Represents the tying run. I got to admit, this is a surprise. After the eight runs the TCU got, I would have thought anybody would go quietly. Sherman Johnson with the big cut. This was earlier, back in the first, with the wind blowing out to right, not that he needed it. Deposited about 10 rows deep in the stands. He's hit 10 on the year. 11 would be the biggest hit of his college career. Fastball is low. A ball and a strike in the Seminoles. Maybe this is why they have come out. 19 times this year they have come from behind and won. To get to Omaha, you have to do a lot of magical things, and they both have. Hey! Strike called on Johnson. One ball, two strikes. Jackson Kami still going at it up there. They go from elation to the edge of the seats. Mm. To say this is gut wrenching is an understatement for both teams tonight. Emotions have gone from the highest highs to the lowest lows, and we're not done. Still only one out, and the big gun, Mike McGee, is on deck. Time run at the plate. Just got a piece to stay alive. Now with two strikes, is Johnson thinking shorter swing, make contact, keep in play, or is he thinking let's be a hero and jack one out of here? He's thinking put a good swing on it because he's got the natural power just to get there, so he just wants to get a hit and hit it solid. He'll be surprised if he hits a home run, but he'll be awfully happy if he does. Got it in on the hands and fought it off. That was a really good pitch by Caleb Merck. Devin Travis down at third, the freshman. Rafael Lopez, the number nine hitter at second, and Tyler Holt with all that speed at first. Got some guys on there that can run right now. One ball, two strikes to Sherman Johnson. He hit was a fastball up, but this one beats him to the spot. Behind in the count, trying to make sure it's a strike. It's not, but it's in a place where it's hard to take and hard to catch up to. Now here's McGee, who was victimized as the closer coming in and roughed up in the previous inning. McGee with 17 home runs, number one on the club. Number one in RBIs, number one in big hits. He has been clutch all year. Beautiful pitch by Caleb Merck, who's ahead 0 and 2. Merck's pitching like this is just a Saturday afternoon in the park. Well, he is not afraid of throwing strikes. No, he's not. That's how he got a 1.01 ERA. Tried to get him to chase and another good block by Holiday. Apparently he can throw anything up there to Holiday and it's not going anywhere. Yeah, the nickname backstop for a catcher fits in perfectly. Haven't had two grand slams since 1998. That was Arizona State and Southern Cal. Another one here with tight breaking pitch just missed. Merck wanted that so.
so much. But it looked like it did miss the strike zone. It was a good call. It was outside. But boy, that's tough to take. Well, I think it's a great call by the umpire to not get caught up in the emotions of the game yes, and ring him up. Absolutely. Two and two. McGee represents the tying run. Fastball fisted. Caught by the second baseman Pena. And Caleb Merck gets out of a bases loaded jam in the bottom of the eighth. What an exceptional pitching performance by the sophomore from Keller, Texas. We'll go to the ninth in a four run game. Okay. Welcome back to Omaha, Nebraska. It has been a wild game. 11 7 TCU over Florida State. I'll tell you what, that eighth was quite a comeback, and the heart and soul of their team started with a big hit and ended with this with a great slide. This double and the way it drove the run in and the way he got into second base without making that third out. And then this home run by Curry was absolutely amazing. That really put him on top. And then when Josh Elam hit this one, that was insurance. They were already up by two, now up by four. And that's an amazing comeback for an eighth inning by TCU. Jim Schlossnagel right there, his head to us. There's Brian Holiday, 16. That bench was lit up in the eighth. How thrilled they have to be. I mean, just beside themselves with joy. And you got to ha be happy for them. I mean, it's been a magical year for them. It's been a magical run for their program. And they seem to be such genuinely nice people. Aaron, or excuse me, Scott Seitz, S I T Z. Freshman out of Jacksonville Beach, Florida, is on the pitch. He's 5 0 this year. He's pitched 38 and two thirds innings. If you pitch that much as a freshman, you're going to be a big part of this club. And Mike Martin has brought somebody to Omaha 14 times, so mm -hmm. you're planning on it when you go to FSU to come back here. TCU will hit in the ninth. Yes, he did. Start with the number eight man, Aaron Schultz. Then Rivera, and back to the top of the order to Jerome Pena. Schultz has worn the collar tonight, 0 for 4. First seven innings. Three runs on six hits, and in the eighth, they just exploded. Huh? And what kind of confidence world does that give a team going forward? I mean, when you make that big a comeback that late in the game, you've got to think, hey, maybe it's destiny. Maybe we can win this thing just because it's our time. Yeah, we saw that with the Oregon Beavers. We've seen them in years past. Fresno State. Fresno State, absolutely amazing the way they were patched together and hurt and still got it done. You never feel like you're out of it, especially when you got somebody like Brian Holiday, a senior leader behind the plate, still pushing the troops. It's got to be music to Jim Schlossnagel's ears when you got a catcher right behind you yelling at your team. Yes, sir. Schultz draws a base on balls. Well, you got to be thinking now, you know, a couple more runs would really be nice. You see the facial hair there on Brian. That wasn't allowed on Jim's teams in the past. You know, he used it as a motivational tool. He said, you guys can have that if you get a three point grade point average. As a team. As a team. And so that's why you see the facial hair on them now. In the years past, you haven't. <laughs> Even a freshman, the freshman ace that they're going to rely on right there's got one working. I think you could grow hair halfway hey. down your back now. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Time was called before that pitch. 
Uh, TCU goes on to win right here. We'll probably see Perk on Friday against UCLA. And if you're UCLA, you'd probably rather see FSU <laughs> than Perk. Absolutely. I mean, he is a terrific pitcher, but then UCLA is loaded with pitching. Up and in. Well, he doesn't bunt that ball, he takes it in the chops. You know, Ralph Trajan. The thing about Perk is that on he came in for orientation to TCU. He did not even pack clothes. He thought he was going to sign. He was drafted number one by the Texas Rangers, Nolan Ryan. Texas didn't come up with enough money to sign him. So four minutes after 11, which is four minutes after midnight East Coast time, he calls Jim Schlossnagel and says, Coach, you still got room for me? I didn't sign. I think Jim found room. Quickly. Yeah, we'll make room. He's out. the bump by Rivera. Nice sacrifice. Get Schultz down to second. Here's what the undefeated freshman did against Florida State on Saturday. Four singles, gave up an unarmed run in seven innings. TCU scored five times in the first. It was a laugher for them. They went on to win 8 1 in the opening game of the College World Series. That looked like a undisciplined, not compact Randy Johnson. That breaking ball and that loose arm being cocked behind that body. Slender, tall, lefty, not quite as tall as Randy, but that is that turbo breaking ball. Oh, ball. Really got some skills. And almost anybody that UCLA will trot out there on Friday would make this a great pitching matchup. You can almost guarantee that one won't be 11 to 7. You, know, you got Rob Rasmussen who hasn't pitched yet their number three starter. You got Trevor Bauer who pitched game one. Could go back to and him. And then Garrett Cole will be there in case they lose. But Garrett Cole yeah. beat TCU six to three and threw the ball fantastic. Back that elbow now, ready? But the UCLA got here on their pitching and scrappy West Coast offense. And it's going to be tough for either one of these two teams and it's looking like TCU to get through UCLA in two games because of the outstanding pitching. Pena has reached twice tonight with a walk and a home run. That one is skied to shallow right. And Ramsey comes on and calls off Devin Travis. That's the second out of the inning. And now Holiday will get another chance to hit. Thank you. Florida State just trying to get out of this inning with no more damage and get that last at bat in the bottom of the ninth inning and make their own comeback. They had their chance in the last inning. They had the bases loaded, couldn't come through. Oh. Caleb Burton did an outstanding pitching job for TCU. Skies it toward right. Ramsey with plenty of room. He'll make the catch. They strand one. Four, five, six coming up for Florida State in the bottom of the ninth. The last chance for the Seminoles. Bottom of the eighth, Brian Holiday's trick slide for TCU. Give him an arm and take it away. Set it up the grand slam for Matt Curry that was bombed over the center field wall. The big shot of the inning of an eight run eighth to get TCU on top. And what a memorable sports day. The USA wins Group C in the World Cup. Wimbledon, the longest match ever played, and it's not over. They'll start again tomorrow, the third day of that match. And TCU down seven to two at one point, puts up eight in the eighth. Yikes. Mike Martin last shot bottom of the ninth. He's brought a team out here 14 times Florida State as a school 20 times never won it. But I guarantee you one thing 
if they don't win it this year he'll be back with the team at the new stadium that's what he does he produces quality baseball players Pitch. Ramsey will lead it off hey. and Caleb Merck who was brilliant in the eighth will start the bottom of the ninth against Ramsey the sophomore from Alpharetta Georgia hit to deep center field Schultz retreating has room. one gone. One thing that Caleb Merck has done, he came into a pressure cooker and he settled everybody down. He's done it by throwing strikes. He has not backed down and tried to work the edges. I'm coming right after you. Yeah. If you beat me, you're going to beat me when I'm throwing strikes. Another one. He just attacks. He's got a big arm. He's got a lot of life on it. And he trusts it. He doesn't matter if it's down the middle. He's coming after you. Steven Cardulo with Boyd on deck. Another fly to center field going back Schultz two gone. It'd be tough for Jimmy Schultz two. not to track it down. And you got a guy out there with a glove that can trust your defense. Let him do the work. It's all up to Jace Boyd with two out and nobody on. Here's our Capital One player of the game, the author of the Grand Slam, Matt Curry. Hey. Couldn't hit it much harder. They'll try anything in that Seminole dugout right now. Fouled out of play. And Merck is just going after everybody. There's no finesse in this kid. 0-2. Breaking pitch. Grounded to short. Featherston. Got him. It's over. TCU with a huge comeback win. Some ball game. Absolutely amazing. You don't want anybody to go home, but you have an elimination game. They both played their heart and soul out, but as far as the heart and soul, Matt Curry with the grand slam, and I'll tell you what, Brian Holiday behind the plate led these guys, made a fantastic slide at second base after sure a big did. hit and kept the inning going. Don't forget Merck. Merck was huge. Yeah. Caleb Merck on the mound kept throwing strikes. Tough, mental, let's go. And the Cinderella adopted team of Omaha is going to move on. Yes, they are.